Last time on Master Chef Canada. Twist! In a classic tag team challenge. Your team! Becky turned up the volume. Run! Run! But other home cooks got lost in the noise. This is probably one of the worst tastings I've ever had. And Marissa's journey came to an end. Tonight, the top six compete in a terrifying restaurant takeover. So you still owe me five sea brain. I need my team to move a lot faster. The pressure is getting to me. And one team's dream. How many is in this pan? Could go up in flames. I need help down here. Are you cooking it or cremating it? Oh my God. In the heart of downtown Toronto, the top six home cooks head toward their most demanding challenge yet. I feel good. We're top six and it's restaurant takeover day. We are in downtown Toronto and I love this neighborhood. I see this church and right across from it is a gorgeous restaurant. Never eaten in a fancy restaurant before. Never been to a fancy restaurant. Never cooked in one. I'm so excited for this. I really want to experience being in a restaurant and taking over a kitchen and see what it's like. So this is a dream come true. Good morning, home cooks. And welcome to the site of your next team challenge, Copatin. Woo! Copatin is the latest culinary project by one of Toronto's most celebrated chefs, our very own Claudio Aprile. Thank you. The restaurant is very upscale, but it's also very rustic. Chef Claudio has great taste, so I would expect nothing less when I come into his restaurant. As you can imagine, this restaurant is very personal to me. In fact, my mother was the one who named it. Copatine means dropping in, sharing food and drink with friends. Tonight, it's your job to deliver some of Claudio's most technically demanding dishes. You'll be serving some of his most valued clientele. In this challenge, you'll be working in two teams to play two appetizers and two entrees from my latest menu. Kagan and Michael G, you did the best job in the tag team challenge. So you'll be today's team captains. Please come and get your aprons. Thanks, chefs. Good luck. I am very nervous about being a team captain. I don't know how I'm gonna do. This is my first team captain, and I love leading people. I love educating and teaching and running things. That is me. Michael G, we flipped a coin earlier on, and you won. So you get first pick. Who's it gonna be? I want someone who's going to be able to work extremely hard. I choose Andy. Thank you. Welcome. I think we make a good team, and really looking forward to working for him. Kagan, who is your first pick? This person is incredibly talented, and they know a diverse range of flavors. I pick Eugene. Let's do this. Kagan has uh, good plating skills. However, he's a mess in the kitchen, and he does not have the best memory either. That's making me nervous. Michael G? My last pick is someone that I know works extremely well on a team, so I choose Nadia. Michael G is a great motivator, but when he's under too much pressure, he just gets flustered. Becky, are you as shocked as I am that you're the last one standing here? No, they're probably scared that I'm gonna yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, please join the blue team. Happy to have you. I'm thrilled to have Becky on my team. I think the kitchen is where Becky was just born to be. She's just got this fire. During service, we'll get feedback from our valued guests. But in the end, it'll be Alvin, Michael, and myself who decide which team wins and which team goes into the pressure test. Now you'll change into your chef's whites and meet Claudio in the kitchen, where he's going to demonstrate the dishes that you'll be responsible for. Good luck. Here we go. Chef Claudio will now demonstrate the two appetizers and two entrees the home cooks will be making. So the first appetizer I'm going to show you is octopus a la plancha. Here you have your octopus. It's awesome watching Chef Claudio do his own thing in his own restaurant. Here you have the jicama salsa, cucumber that has been compressed in gin, grapefruit segments, a little bit of creme fraiche. I'm struck by the ease at which Chef Claudio puts together this plate. My thought is that this plate is a lot of work. So here we have the octopus a la plancha. 
Appetizer number two is beef tartare with smoked egg yolk and puffed pasta. So you've got two ounces of chopped beef tartare here. Start with sea salt, pickled mustard seed, cracked black pepper. This is beef fat vinaigrette. Here you have some chives, a little splash of olive oil, and now you're just gonna mix this up. These dishes are very scary, and it's only the first two that we've seen, and there are a crap ton of elements in here. So here I'm grating the smoked egg yolk over top of this puffed pasta. It's a little bit of cilantro, cracker. What's that? Simple, but not so simple. So the first entree I'm gonna show you is the sea bream. You're gonna add your sea bream to your hot pan. The fish should be medium rare in the middle. The fish has to be cooked perfectly because it is a white fish, so like that's less forgiving than pink fish. So now I'm gonna spoon the mixture of chorizo, potatoes, clams into your bowl here. So that we're just gonna lay on top. And then the next step, your corn and saffron velouté. So there you go. This is the sea bream entree. Next thing, I'm gonna show you how to do the lamb loin. Here's your lamb loin. So you're gonna let this sear. You're gonna caramelize the outside of the meat here. See, perfect caramelization. The lamb is intimidating to me because it could be overcooked, it could be undercooked, it could be dry. There's a lot of moving parts with the lamb. The lentil ragu, carrots that have been glazed in honey. This is your last entree. Perfectly cooked, medium rare lamb loin. I want every dish that leaves this kitchen tonight to look exactly the way I showed you. There's a lot of components that need to go down on each plate to get them right. The pressure is on. I hope you all paid close attention to Claudio's instructions, because in one hour, his guests will be expecting the high quality that Copatine is already famous for. If you're not nervous yet, you should be. While you cook, Claudio will be at the pass watching your every move. Remember, at the end of this challenge, the weakest team will face a pressure test that will send at least one of you home. Claudio is counting on you. Are you ready to make him proud? Yes, yes, yes. Your prep time starts now! Team on three, one, two, three, team! team. With less than an hour before service, the teams prep their beef tartare and octopus a la plancha. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's keep working. There is a lineup outside now, guys. Are you ready for this? Yes, Are you ready. amped up? Yeah. Guys, get organized on your stations here. Clean up what your stuff you have going. Welcome to Copa Team. All right, Michael G. Kagan, the restaurant is filling up. No one stands still the entire service. You know, guys, focus, but let's have some fun, okay? You guys ready? Yes, chef. Yes, yes chef. chef. Red Team, you have your first order. Chef. One octopus, yes, one tartare. One octopus, one tartare. For the appetizers, I want Andy to be working on the cooking of the octopus. I want Nadia to be working on the mix and the marinade for the steak tartare. And I'm going to be putting together the final composition of these dishes. You let me know when you need me, OK? Yep, I will. It's looking great. All right, Blue Team, your first order is four octopus, two beef tartare. Eugene? Four octopus, two tartare. Bring it in. Becky is handling the tartare dish. Eugene's role is to cook the octopus. My role is to plate the octopus. Kagan, you have to clean the plates before they go out. Yes, Becky. All right, red team, ordering two octopus, two tartare. Two octopus going on now. It's pretty stressful having so many orders coming in, but I know that as a team, we're going to be able to pull through. Where's my tartare going with this octopus, guys? Right, right here, chef. Red team, nice plates. Is this beginner's luck? Pretty awesome. Thank you very much, Chef. Red team, nice looking appetizers. Thank you, really chef. great. We are doing very well. We are talking, we're communicating. How can I help here? How can I help? We are working like a proper kitchen in my eyes. So blue team, the red team is already pushing apps out. They're on their second table already. You have not given me one table yet. Eugene, where are those octopus? They're coming. Two minutes. For octopus. Perfect. Plate them. Put them down. Octopus down. This is our first plating, and Kagan's already asked me to do the plating instead now. 20 minutes on your first table, Kagan. We're going to pick it up from here. Things are feeling a little bit chaotic. Becky, how we doing? Two more plates, nearly up. Blue team, you got to hustle. You still owe me four octopus. Kagan, you're getting absolutely crushed right now I, by the I red see team. That. I need my team to move a lot faster. They're just yelling, frantically moving. Okay. And it seems like they're not actually doing anything. You owe me four more octo right now. 
Four more octo? There's no clear option for what to do next. Like, I don't know how to fix this. Kagan, do you need help with the octopus? Yes. Kagan, is this finished? Greens. The greens. Kagan, the greens. Kagan. Kagan, they're making me wait for plates, and then they come up, and they're not even that great. The pressure is getting to me. Kagan. At Claudio Aprile's Copatine. You're going to table 31, octopus. The home cooks are serving up elevated Canadian cuisine. I am eating the octopus, and it's really lovely. I've got the steak tartare, and it's phenomenal. But during the appetizer service, the blue team is just barely keeping up with their orders. Blue team ordering three octopus. Yep. You guys got to hustle now. Do you yeah. need help on octopus? I'm There's going no... to start octopus right now. Hey. The octopus dish is way more work than I thought it would be. We just got the order, Becky. Don't worry. Every little element takes a few seconds to do. I need that octopus now. Flip that, flip that, flip that. I need help plating. Okay. Mike G is a phenomenal captain. I uh, don't like that one. Too skinny. Do it again. He is focused. He's got an amazing plan. He's communicating well. Are they good? You guys are doing a great job. Thank you, chefs. They're ready for service. Kagan, take a look at this plate. This is your competition. I'll give you a recap. You owe me four tartars, two octo. Four tartars. And your apps are all out. Help us finish these plates. Becky, beautiful plating here. Thank you. All right, guys, great job on the appetizers. And the appetizer round, our team has done a terrific job of really owning the challenge. Nice work, red team. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Thank you, Chef. We did a good job. Guys, we just have to be cleaner. Up. Yes. With the appetizer service complete, the dinner guests critique the red and blue team's dishes. I'm eating the octopus for, from the red team. I thought the balance of flavors was nice, but uh, unfortunately, the octopus was slightly overdone. The red team's uh, beef was very, very good, so it was awesome. I'm eating the blue team's octopus, and I love the char on the octopus. It's nice and tender and firm, and just overall a really tasty dish. As the home cooks prepare for the entree service, the judges take a moment to taste each team's appetizers. So here we have the octopus a la plancha. The blue team's plating is not as sophisticated or as clean as the red team. You can see that the red team here has really placed everything properly. Let's try the blue team's octopus first here. The cook on that, very even. The interior is juicy, you can see that. But that octopus is so tender. The flavor and the way they cook that octopus, it's perfect. I hope the red team tastes just as good as it looks. You know, it's just a tad on the dry side. The execution was not there. Let's try the blue team's tartar. I find the blue team's generally under seasoned. It's unbalanced. Let's try the red team. Well, disappointingly, um, I think the red team is suffering from the same problems as the blue team. No seasoning. I would say they were even Steven. Round two, entrees are up next. Start thinking ahead of what it is that you're working on. Okay, cheers. cheers. For the entrees, guests will choose between sea bream with chorizo and clams and lamb loin with black lentils and carrots. Let's go. Blue team. One lamb, two bream. You're going to be real busy, Eugene. All right, red team. The chef. The chef. First order, two sea bream. Two sea bream, guys. Coming two sea bream. Up. Then you're going to give me three bream, one lamb. How many fish do you have? We got three on. Andy, you're going to overcook your fish. Yes, Chef. Your lamb's probably 10 or 12 minutes out. How far away from lamb? Right out of the gates, we're struggling with timing. Mike? Yeah? Mike, start thinking about how we time this better. All right, blue team, listen up. Ordering two lamb, two sea bream. Two lamb, two sea bream. Two Do more sea bream, that that's nine in total. Eugene, that's nine total. This is the first time I've ever cooked sea bream. This is crazy. Let me see that fish. Overcooked? Overcooked. Okay. Eugene, it's overcooked. We need to redo it. So, Eugene, you just wasted five pieces of fish. I'm sorry, Chef. Right now, all we have is one out of the five orders for the first table. It feels like we're starting the challenge over again now. Nadia, here comes lamb down. Need it straight. 
Okay. Okay. Red team, your fish is gonna get cold while you're waiting yes, for yes. your land to be cooked, Rentals right? Are coming down right now. If you guys give me cold food in the past, it's gonna go right back to you. Move a plate, move a plate. Let's go, come on. The orders are coming in. Five sea bream. It's absolutely chaotic. Red team, I need that lamb yesterday. The fish has already gone out. Very hungry. When are you gonna give me five bream and one lamb? As soon as we can get the, the bream from over there. Eugene, how many clams are in this pan? Can, no, can. Eugene, listen to what I'm saying before you answer. How many is in this pan? How many orders? It's for five. Okay. Becky, are you in charge now? It seems like it. it. Seems like it, right? Looks like it. I'm having a hard time balancing all of these different things. I can't pay attention to Chef Claudio, and I can't pay attention to the rest of my team. Eugene, we yeah. have two orders of clam and only one fish. Okay, four fish are about to come. Eugene, you got that? Take it. Take control. Becky, you want to take charge? Do you need me to? Eugene listens to you, and you're more composed. Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm excited to be team captain. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. Thank you, Becky. The best chance we have of winning is with Becky at the helm. Ordering four lamb. Four lamb. Andy, After that, you're going to give me five lamb, one bream. OK, I'm coming down. Okay, Five lamb, season them all. Yep, these are season it. trays. These are raw. This is clean for done. Malute. Who's got Valute? How many lamb total? 13 lamb. 13 lamb. 13. Timing is off. We're in the weeds right now. We need to work harder. OK, Nadia, faster and get out. Take the pan with you. We got to work through this. Tegan, where's the lamb at? Two minutes on the lamb. Get the plate ready. Are the lentils done? Yes. Two right here, and then I'll put the other fish. Need to be more. The key to running a professional kitchen is yelling. <laughs> Two lambs. Nice looking lambs, Becky. Thank you. How long in the bream? The bream is about two minutes away. Becky's team captain, and it's going much smoother. I need those two breams fast. Yep. What's going on, Red Team? You start off very strong, We're still and now it's slipping guys. away from you. I am getting extreme amounts of fire in my station. Oil, flame, does not go well together. Give me that bream. Are you cooking it or cremating it? This is burning my lamb. This is putting me way back. I need help down here fast. During the dinner service, the red team is struggling with their timing. Are you cooking it or cremating it? And the cook on their lamb. I need help down I'm here. Coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's go. Need trays. I need trays. Michael G., what is going on with you? You're burning lamb. Mike, take a deep breath. My order of lamb is all burnt, which means that I'm four orders in the weeds right now. Things are totally hitting the fan. Stop taking my stuff. Mike, calm, 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 calm. Andy notices this, comes right over to me, and says, calm down. We got this. We can do it. Relax. Yeah, you got this, Mike. Don't get rattled. Don't get rattled. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Andy saved me. We've got nine more lamb and three sea bream. We've got four up right now. I'm waiting on the lentils to cook. Get your garnishes. Get your lentils. Yep. They're all ready to go. OK, good, 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 good. We're, we're good. We're good now. We're good. Enjoy this? Michael. Finally. Wow. All right, Becky, you're doing a great job. Your, Thank you. Your team is catching up now. That was a smart move by relinquishing control of your team and giving it to Becky. It was the right thing to do. I'm like, hashtag Team Becky right now. Just like, yes, you go, girl, yes. Two lamb, Becky, and you are clear. No, Eugene, tops up. <laughs> it feels amazing to be in a professional environment. Beautiful, guys. It feels really natural. I'm beyond proud right now. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. Mike, how are we doing down there? We're good. Next lamb's coming up. OK, cool. I think we're, t we're caught up on fish. Looking at these dishes, I'm really happy the way they're turning out. Up. Service is up. All right, guys, we're getting our rhythm now. That's good. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. We really just need to pump out these last few dishes, and we've completed probably one of the hardest cooks that we'll ever have to do in our lives. Medium well going here. I'm really proud of my team. We're good. We're caught up. We're caught up. All right, that's it. Service is over. Bring it in, guys. Good job.
Good work, guys. Nadia. With all the entrees served, the diners share their impressions on the red and blue team's dishes. I'm eating the red team's lamb dish, and it is delicious. It is colorful, it's beautifully plated, and it's very flavorful. The fish was a good temperature. Everything else was a bit cold and a little bit undersalted. I am trying the blue team's lamb, and it is delicious. The red team's fish is moist. The flavors are very good. The blue team's lamb is cooked medium rare, which is perfect. So here we have the sea bream from the red team and the sea bream from the blue team. The red team has done a great job caramelizing the skin on the sea bream. The skin on the fish is perfectly rendered. It's crispy. The potato done to perfection. I'm struggling to find a fault on the red team's sea bream. It's a really well executed dish. Let's try the blue. The skin on the sea bream again here is perfectly seared. Look at that. It's crispy, a little bit golden here on the edge. I can tell you, for me, the fit, it's good, but it's slightly overcooked. All right, let's try the red team's lamb. Let's see how it's cooked. It's a bit over. This is more medium than yes. medium rare. So the red team missed the mark on the cook of the lamb. The lento, the carrots, for me, they were perfect. Let's try the blue teams now. I got to tell you, the blue team looks looks a bit tired to me. It does not have the sophistication that I showed them originally when I gave them a demo. Let's see what we get. The cook on the blue team's lamb is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. The lentils, well seasoned. The seasoning on the lamb for the blue team is under seasoned. The red team and the blue team are very close in many elements of both their dishes. But for their first attempt in a professional kitchen, both teams, I thought, did very well. I agree. They did a great job. The guests will now fill out comment cards, which the judges will take into consideration when deciding which team wins and which team faces the pressure test. It's the morning after the restaurant takeover, and the home cooks return to the MasterChef Canada kitchen to find out which team has won the challenge. I am very proud of Blue Team. We had a hard battle to fight, and I couldn't be happier. If Blue Team wins, it's going to be because of Becky. I think our team did a very good job, and we took all of our strategies and game plans into account and really pulled off a good service. Welcome back, Kitchen Conquerors. Claudio's menu is complex and eclectic, and you did not let us down. Red team, your appetizers were stunningly plated, and your sea bream entree was done to perfection. Blue team, you nailed the cook on both your octopus and your lamb. Both teams had hits and misses in terms of doneness and flavor. In the end, one team edged out the other. I've been having a pretty cushy ride so far. I haven't had to cook in one pressure test, and I'd like to keep that streak alive. The team that's safe from elimination is... Please let it be blue. With every bone in my body, I want to win this. The team that's safe from elimination is... The red team. Yes! Woo! We won! Congratulations, red team. Please remove your apron and head upstairs. To the balcony I go. We deserve to win because we worked the best as a team and our flavors were on point. Blue team, all three of you are going to be competing in this next pressure test. Please come up and get your black aprons. There's only three of us left, and Becky's won multiple times for a good reason. Kagan fought his way back, so this is going to be a tough challenge. Tonight's pressure test is a true balancing act between fearlessness and finesse. The macaron. 
classic French confection. The challenge is probably the worst thing that you could put in front of me. Two identical pillows of airy meringue, sandwiching a decadent cream filling, crispy and soft, polished and playful, all at the same time. It is the epitome of elegant simplicity. We want to see 10 macarons cradled in a beautiful gold and white box. And we want you to add your personal touch by presenting them in two distinct flavors. Uniformity is key, consistent in their texture and size. This is hell on earth for me. I'm going up against the two best bakers in this competition, and the last thing I baked was a quarter of a cake that sent me home. So, eek. We're giving you 75 minutes to make 10 magnificent macarons. You will have at your disposal all the equipment that you need, including premium German-made Mila appliances and a specialty pantry filled with items to inspire your choice of flavors, colors, and fillings. The home cook with the weakest macarons will leave the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Time starts now. I've uh, made macarons before. I'm confident in my abilities, um, and I think I'll have that advantage. Gotta get these guys ready. I've never made these before, and these two folks beside me know exactly what they're doing, so underdog is a statement that is very applicable right now. The macaron is such a blank slate, so there's no shortage of great opportunity to personalize them, make them unique and different. One that I happen to love is dulce de leche. Another one I love is uh, a matcha. The creative options are limitless. The first macaron is a green tea matcha pistachio with a chocolate filling. My second one is a coconut lime leaf macaron. I need to uh, show the judges that I know what I'm doing and that I deserve to be here. I have some ideas, and if I can execute, it's gonna be great. I wanna go big and bold with my flavors. I'm doing coffee, rum, and chocolate, and I'm doing lavender, orange, anise. I'm feeling like if I can pull off these flavor combinations, it might overcome any technical difficulties that I have. Come on, 240. Hi there, Becky. What flavors are you doing for us today? I'm going to do a hazelnut praline and a bakewell flavored one. Ah, the bakewell tart. <laughs> Is that an old favorite of yours when you uh, live back in England? Yeah, everyone loves bakewell tarts. So just describe to me those flavors in your macaron that's going to resemble a bakewell tart. Because there's a lot of Canadians out there who will have no idea what you're talking about. I'm going to put almond extract in the uh, buttercream. I'm going to put a cherry in the middle and maybe some, like, flaked almonds. Becky, I'll let you focus on those macarons, and I can't wait to try the bakewell tart. Thanks. Carry on. Growing up in England, bakewell tarts are like a staple in your cupboard. Like, you just have them all the time. Hey, Eugene. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me about these flavors. Uh, I have uh, lime leaves here, as well as lime rind, and a coconut that I've uh, dehydrated in the oven already. This Thai lime leaf, beautiful, beautiful. But, okay, it's very, very delicate. When you get that combination, make sure the coconut doesn't overpower that. I'll be sure to taste everything. Okay. Your filling better shine. Yes, Chef. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, Chef Alvin. When you pipe, your macaron, you want to make sure that it just slumps a little so you have that smooth top. The quality that I look for is a light little crust when you gently bite into it. And then your filling has to be complementary. It has to add a pop. 30 minutes. You got 30 minutes left. Get them in the oven now. They're moving faster than me, that's okay. I know that I'm a little behind everybody else because I don't know how to make macarons. 
I think Kagan's got more macaroon on his apron than anybody else. I hate baking. This kind of precision is not what I'm known for. I hate baking. I finally have my macarons in the oven, and now I need to start making the filling. You can feel the pressure building already, right? This is where one false move and you could go down in flames. I run my filling to the fridge, and when I'm coming back to my station, I see the butter still sitting on the counter. Oh, I forgot my butter in the buttercream. So I need to get the butter in the buttercream. I have, like, no time to spare. Just 15 minutes. Come on, guys. Let's go, guys. Boys! Let's go, let's go. Becky's having some trouble now. Her piping isn't working. The buttercream is too chunky to fit through the piping tip, so I have to use a spoon. I'm really worried about Kagan right now. I don't think he's going to have enough time to finish this challenge. He's looking at the clock intensely. I tell you, he is really worried. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. All 10 have to fit snugly into that box. Eugene's macarons look very big. And very, when it comes very to the thick. filling, they're very thick. Yeah, very, very tall. I'm not sure he's going to get 10 in the box. Oh my gosh, he's trying to squeeze one more in her box. Oh. Let's go. One minute, you have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. Get him in the box. Get one minute. Get them in the box! Get them in the box now! Oh, God. You got this, Kagan. You got it. Come on, Eugene. Use both hands! Oh, my God! I put them in the box. I count them. There's only eight in there. So I shoved two more in. My macarons look like crap. Come on, Eugene. Come on, Kagan! Take go, what you Kagan. have and go! Take what you Kagan have and go! Good job, guys. Very close. I've just got it all on display here. I have no idea what's in those other two boxes, though. It's time to taste your macarons. Hey, Eugene. When I open this box, I want to see 10 uniform, perfectly shaped, Macaron. Am I going to see that? I don't believe so, Chef. Well, the first one, not bad. Second one, not bad. Keep going. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. OK. The flavors better knock me out because the shapes are a little off. This is a Thai one, right? Yes, Chef. Wow. I got the Thai flavors. I got the Thai lime leaf. Got a bit of the coconut. The taste is great. Thank Amazing. You. Eugene. Hi, Chef. All right, I'm going to try the matcha. And this is a chocolate and green tea. And pistachio. Oh, look at that. Nice little surprise. What happened to the middle of it? There might be a uh, little pieces of butter in it because I actually forgot the butter and the buttercream. I can see I that. It. I like where you were going. 
great flavor profiles, great combination, just you failed in the execution. How many are in the box, Becky? Ten. Well, let's see what they look like, shall we? At first glance, I see one that is definitely crushed. Yeah. And the one adjacent to it. I have to try the bake tart. It would be rude not to. <laughs> Very gentle crust on the outside is there. And that soft, moist center of the macaron itself, beautiful. And then it's that almond flavor that comes through. That is Bakewell Tart a la macaron. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. What is the second? flavor that you made. Can you remind me? Hazelnut praline. Hmm. Are you happy with this filling? No. What happened? I wanted the praline crunchy, and it was just like too crunchy. I couldn't pipe it, and then I was just spooning it on. You missed the mark. The filling kind of gets lost. There's not enough of it. Kagan. Chef Michael. Right out of the gate. I'm a little disappointed. I'm not getting a box that I can open up and see what the big surprise is inside. So time really got the better of you, didn't it? How many did you get in the box, Kagan? There are 10. Let me try one, please. Let's take one out of the box. The first one there is orange, fennel, and lavender. I have to be honest, I think this is a winning flavor combination. Yes, Chef. I love the creaminess, the shades of lavender. You don't bake? Oh. Nope. You got 10 in a box. Thank you, Gagan. Thank you, Chef Michael. Kagan. Chef Alvin. Crush one here. What, what's inside here? The coffee? That's the coffee rum. OK, coffee yeah. rum. That's, um, that's drunk because uh, <laughs> it's melting pretty badly. It's too runny. A macaron has to be pretty. Mm -hmm. First of all, the macaroon is slightly raw. Yeah. yeah. Yet that problem. I'm not getting the most favorite part. I'm not getting the rum. I'm not getting the coffee. But I'll give you this. You put in maximum effort. But is that enough? The judges aren't especially pleased with any of us. I'm sick to my stomach right now. Thank you, everyone. Now, if you'd please give us a moment. I feel like I didn't do good enough. I'm disappointed in the presentation because two of them were crushed. All I can hope for is that the buttercream flavors save me. I put it all on the table. I put everything into this baking challenge. And I just want to stay so bad. Perfect macarons rely upon skill and a little bit of magic. And sadly, some of yours lack both. But there was one standout. Becky, you nailed your meringue. It was glossy, perfectly domed, and overshadowed the problems with your filling. Please take off your apron and head on up to the gallery. Thank you. I'm super excited for this. It's pretty cool to be top five. 
It honestly doesn't feel real. Kagan, Eugene, at this point in the competition, we have to hold you to an even higher standard. There simply is no room for home cooks that can't deliver MasterChef Canada quality. Which is why we feel we have no choice but to say goodbye to Kagan, we're sorry. Your presentation and flavors were the weakest tonight. Eugene, you are lucky. And your flavors gave you a slight edge. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. I'm really grateful for the second chance. I could have gone home today. I need to show the judges I can do better. Kagan, you came back into this competition a better home cook. And we're not just talking about your skill set, we're talking about your attitude. Since returning, you've led with humility, given credit where credit was due, but you've never lost that competitive drive. You should be very proud of that. Thank you, Chef Michael. Now please come up and say goodbye one more time. Pleasure to get to know you, man. <laughs> MasterChef Canada has shown me how much I love food and everything around food. I am very proud of how hard I worked. Oh, yeah. This is actually the tastiest cake I've had here. You don't often get second chances in life. Oh! <laughs> I love you. Love you. Thanks for coming back. The judges obviously saw something in me. Genius. And I got to come back and show them that they were right. Hagen, we didn't get a chance to ask you this last time. Before you leave, tell us who up there is Canada's next master chef. It's got to be Becky. She's something special. And I'm, I'm so happy to have gotten to work with her a couple of times. I'm better for it. Nicely said, Kagan. Please go put your apron at your station. My idea of redemption was winning the whole thing, but for me, the redemption was being true to myself, and I think I accomplished that. It's bittersweet going home without the title, but I didn't give up, I had fun, and I know there's food in my future. Next time, Lift. what goes around, comes around. Oh, remember these? Oh, no. That's where it all started. The home cooks get a second chance with their first audition ingredient. I remember the last time I cooked with seaweed. It did not go too well. Help us welcome back. Paired with a side of past champions. This is MasterChef Canada royalty. 